It's really great to be here. Thank you, Amy, and thanks, Josh Taylor. I know this has taken a lot of work. Um, time check. Okay, so I appreciate the introduction from Amy because what I really want to talk about is uh, not just lady bosses, but bosses in general. Um, Hi Fi Farms was founded back in January of 2015 when I uh, came up here and joined a couple of friends, uh, Lee Henderson and Richard Vinyl. And we started this funky little company with a basement grow in Portland. And um, these were hip guys, kind of music guys, and they knew a lot about weed and a lot about music. And I knew a little bit about business and we decided to get together and start Hi Fi Farms. And it was crazy, you know, it's a startup. Startups are nutty. But we kind of gradually created some method out of the madness. And um, one of the very first things we did was we created Oregon's very first employee stock option plan for a cannabis company. Um, and that was a big deal, you know. We had all come here from other places. And we, weren't, we were building a community here, but we were not from here. And what was clear was that there was already a community here of people who had really put themselves out there as activists or people who were patients, people who were looking to try to support the legalization efforts. And there was a huge community of people here who really deserved to take a place in this industry as it started to emerge. And so we decided to design a company that made every single person who worked for that company an owner in that company. And that is basically what an employee stock option um, plan does. What it does is it creates accounts for employees that the owners of the company can in invest in, in the same way you might have a 401k, and then the employees can use that money to purchase stock in the company. If you do it early enough in a company, the whole buying stock in the company thing doesn't really happen and you just kind of give the uh, equity to the employees. And Hi-Fi Farms now has, I think we are at 22 employees, including all of the uh, founders, because we all consider ourselves employees, frankly, and owners. And um, all of those people, including 60% of women that we have in our company, are now owners in a cannabis company. And that's huge because whether Hi-Fi Farms makes it or any of these other amazing Oregon cannabis companies make it, um, people who have this opportunity to participate in ownership are going to be able to participate in this huge creation of wealth and opportunity that we're gonna see emerge along with this industry. And by vesting our employees in ownership, one thing that's going to happen when the federal rules change is we're going to see a lot of money come into our state from other places. We're going to see a lot of companies buy these little companies that look like a good opportunity and they're going to get scooped up. And the problem with that is that once that happens, all of the wealth and all of the opportunity and all of the future potential of those companies gets sort of sucked up out of our state. And it disappears into what I like to think of as the financial services stratosphere, where the Lear jets fly over and, you know, who knows, billionaires. But we didn't, we didn't want to see that happen, not to our company. Um, and I, I don't want to see that happen to a lot of the companies here and a lot of the people that I see working in this industry. And so I've kind of started to try and talk about this a little bit and uh, explain a little bit about what these things are that you can create in your companies and tell people a little bit about them. And so I brought some data with me. So there's a bunch of studies that are done on this, not in cannabis, but just in business in general. And Rutgers did a study that said, oh, companies that have employee participation have better economic performance. Well, it's a little bit vague. So Harvard did a follow-on study to that and they dug in a little bit and what they discovered was that within these companies, the employees do a better job basically actively monitoring and managing one another, which means if you think about that, actively monitoring and managing one another, so you have a much more cohesive team, you have a lot more peer and personal accountability 
you just have a system where the managers aren't constantly trying to tell people to stop going outside and taking smoke breaks and can actually think more strategically about the company while all the owners underneath them are effectively managing and improving their particular areas of work and their areas of responsibility. The AUS General Accounting Office did a study, the largest study to date of 110 companies, and they demonstrated that productivity growth in um, participatory ownership companies is an average of 52% a year. Now, that's about three times the equivalent in companies that have simply have employees. Um, and NCEO, which is the National Center for Employee Ownership, showed up with an 8 to 11 percent fa faster growth rates in companies that have employee ownership. These numbers in the landscape of business where you're trying to eke out these tiny little bits of competitive advantage, these are huge numbers. This is a huge differentiator and I, I get the feeling that not not everybody knows this. Not everybody really understands what the real basis for doing something like this is. Um, way more interesting than data are people. And um, I want to talk a little bit about a guy called John Vincent, who we hired back in September of last year. He is um, a vet. He came home from Afghanistan with very bad PTSD, and he was basically hooked on opioids and anti-anxiety medication. He was, um, he was directed through a veterans group that he was participating in to try cannabis to help him with his PTSD. And he tried it and he was so, he had such a compelling experience doing that, that he started um, his own little medical grow and he was growing for himself and um, six other patients. His mom, when he was a kid, had a soil company and he um, would you know learn a lot from her and go around with her. And that was the area that he was really interested in. And he was hired by a couple of cannabis companies. But frankly, he didn't get treated super well. He had a pretty bad experience. And when we met him, um, we met him because um, his girlfriend became one of our employees. And he would kind of come and see her at the farm and start chatting with us about soil and the stuff he was interested in. But he'd been pretty turned off and he didn't want to work in a cannabis company. Anyway, needless to say, a month or two later, he was working in our cannabis company. And, um, and became an owner in our cannabis company. And the incredible transformation that happens when you give someone real ownership, you vest them in the future of something, and then you basically give them the responsibility to run their job, figure out what they're passionate about, decide the problems that need to get solved, and have a voice. They get to take risks. It's okay to make mistakes. It's really about a culture, you know? The ownership isn't enough. Ownership is really a function of a feeling of engagement and responsibility. And over the last few months, uh, John's just really kind of dug in on the soil thing, and now Hi-Fi Farms makes its own soil. Um, we use living soil. We've eradicated our cultivation costs for soil and nutrients by 60%. Um, what we're able to do in our own business has been pretty stunning. and. John, uh, we send him off to conferences and soil stuff, and he's on Instagram and all the rest of it, and of course he's talking about it. And now we're getting calls from all over the country for people saying, hey, how do I buy your soil? Where do I get your soil? So now this guy is basically starting within our company. We have the potential for an entirely new division within our company because this is a guy who feels like his talents and his passion, he's found a place where he can be creative and express that and he owns a piece of that. He owns a piece of the company that he's helping to build. And the other piece of this transformation, honestly, is, is for me personally. You know, I had a career in uh, change management and cultural development and organizational design. I've, I've done all of those things. Um, and I, I knew that this was powerful and I had read a lot of studies and you know, been to a lot of seminars and all the rest of it. But I didn't really get it, you know? I didn't really know uh, what it meant um, until I had this incredible opportunity with the support of my partners and the incredible support of our investors, who at this point, we've given more of our company to our employees than we've given to our investors, which is pretty staggering. 
And um, it's been a completely transformational experience as, as someone, for me, as having had the opportunity to create an environment where you get to see people um, kind of take a minute to get used to the fact that they're not going to get told what to do and they're not going to get told off and managed and monitored. And that's anxiety provoking for some people. But once people settle in and they get used to it, um, the kind of transformation that can occur and the kind of community that can be created and the team that can be created is a really amazing thing. And it's been a transformational experience for me and I'm just completely thankful that I had the opportunity to be in a position where I could put these policies in place and see what really happens when you give people ownership. And I really appreciate the opportunity to tell you a little bit about it. So thank you very much.